It's hard for us to imagine that O'Fallon was once part of the American frontier. Before the highways and modern developments, this area was untamed land, traversed by explorers like Daniel Boone. Nicholas Kreckel may be known as O'Fallon's founder and first resident, followed by familiar names like Darius Heald and Omer Dames. But before there even was an O'Fallon, Missouri, there was Jacob Zumwalt's log cabin. In 1798, Jacob and his extended family settled in what is now Fort Zumwalt Park, and their log cabin home has been an important piece of O'Fallon ever since. At times a home, a strategic fort, a stable, and a dilapidated ruin, Zumwalt's fort is an enduring symbol of O'Fallon's history. And on Saturday, May 2nd, 2015, we were honored to hold a dedication ceremony for a rebuilt fort, standing proudly once again. On behalf of the city of O'Fallon and the O'Fallon City Council, it is my great privilege to welcome everyone on this exciting and momentous occasion, the dedication of Zumwalt's Fort. This project is meant to be more than the reconstruction of an old, worn down log cabin, but a place where our children can come to learn and appreciate what our forefathers endured to raise their families and to provide a living, where they would be able to grow and prosper. The project has had a long journey from its beginning as a glean in the eye of Mr. Raleigh Jessup who championed the rebuilding of this War of 1812 family fort for many years. Only a few dared to live here on what was there the leading edge of the American frontier. Jacob Zumwalt and his family were among those few. And now with this fort as an interpretive site, we can present their story. There are tons of great stories throughout history, and Zumwalt's fort is no exception. In 1812, the log cabin home was fortified, providing the influx of settlers with protection against Native American raids. In 1817, the Heald family purchased the land from Jacob Zumwalt for $1,000, and the Healds lived in the fort for decades. It was the site of action during the Civil War, when the Healds were arrested for conspiring with the Confederate Army, and their home was ransacked by Arnold Kreckel, Nicholas's brother. In 1884, Darius Heald had the imposing brick home constructed up the hill from the fort, calling his new residence Stony Point. Known today as the Heald home, Darius Heald lived in the building until he passed away in 1904. Not long after, a tornado hit Stony Point and the site fell into general disrepair. While the Heald home received some attention from the series of owners who followed the Healds, Zumwalt's original fort slowly decayed. By the 1950s, all that was left standing from the fortified home was the commanding central chimney overlooking Lake Wetzel. But O'Fallon has always cherished its history. And in 1998, the O'Fallon Community Foundation was established to restore our historical sites to their former glory. Their first project, the Heald Home, was completed in 2001. And it was only natural that they would then turn their attention to a familiar log cabin sitting right next door. After years of hard work, the foundation had rebuilt this famous landmark, and we can add one new story to the fort's history. Its dedication ceremony was overseen by a reunion of Jacob Zumwalt's descendants. I, I think it's real important for the next generation and the next generation and the ge next generation to know uh, where they come from. It makes people appreciate what the city is now and how it's grown, and I think it's just wonderful. Knowing that this is right in the, almost in the center of town, and they have streets and schools named after our family, uh, that just, that really, you know, touches your heart, it, re it really does. There's lots of stories came from this place, and it was a stopover for a lot of travelers that were exploring in this country, and uh, I am very proud to be a descendant. A project like this necessarily requires the support and involvement of the community, and O'Fallon citizens definitely stepped up to the challenge. Every step of the way, volunteers and supporters were ensuring this project's completion. Charlie Brungies donated lumber, and Jesse Francis offered his technical expertise. Local companies donated supplies and assistance, and there are just too many people involved to name everyone individually. However, one man deserves special attention. 
the fort's reconstruction was spearheaded by Raleigh Jessup, who unfortunately passed away before the fort could be completed, and his absence at the dedication ceremony was felt by everyone involved with the project. Raleigh was just a genuine good old boy that had dreams for Old Fallon of what it could be and the community, community involvement. And he's just a kind, gentle old man that had this dream that here was a piece of American history. And it became an obsession of his to see this rebuilt. I'm so very grateful. This day's just a little bit bittersweet without Raleigh Jessup here. Um, he's advocated the building of this fort beginning in the 1970s and um, he is absolutely with us every step of the way in this project and uh, we owe it to him. Zumwalt's fort can be found appropriately enough on Jessup Drive in the heart of Fort Zumwalt Park. This site is the only War of 1812 site open to the public and it's also the only one to have been rebuilt. Our fort boasts an incredible wealth of historical artifacts, including items dating back to Jacob Zumwalt's time. And we hope you visit the fortified log cabin the next time you're in Fort Zumwalt Park.